Good morning, good morning, good morning, true love, family, and friends. We thank you for worshiping with us today on this early Resurrection Sunday. We have so much to be grateful for this day. My name is Angela Riley on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Willie Jacobs Jr. We welcome you to our Easter Sunday Holy Communion virtual worship experience. We would be remiss if we did not thank you and bless you for allowing us to enter into your homes by way of live streaming or conference line because we know that you could have tuned into another channel or not tuned in at all. So we want you to know that you are a very important part of this virtual ministry experience and that even though we are separated by distance, you can and should be actively involved in our worship experience this morning. So we, we are encouraging your participation. This morning, you can click share to host an online watch party. You can tag, text, or inbox your family and friends to join us as you hear and receive a message from God today. If you know someone who does not have Facebook, you can text or call them quickly and let them know that they can dial into 347-817-817. 70. And the access code is 1144034. Let everyone know that the True Love Missionary Baptist Church Easter Sunday Holy Communion Virtual Worship Experience is live and in session. As a reminder, the governor of the state of Nevada has explicitly reminded us that we are to maintain the order for social, social distancing and has imposed limitations on so, social gathering, which also includes places of worship. We recognize and can appreciate that these drastic orders have been taken to save lives and to reduce the se severe impact that the coronavirus has had in our nation. But because we as a body of believers believe that we are to obey the laws of the land, we come to you early this Sunday morning, this resurrection Sunday morning, virtually, and in the presence of the most gracious God. This past week, during our virtual in-house spring revival, we received a word from God by way of some of our very own ministers who preach revelations about the experiences at the empty tomb. I don't know about you, but I thank God that the women went to the tomb and Jesus wasn't there. Do you know what that means? Our God is not dead. We serve a living God. We serve a God who rose with all power for you and for me. And we thank him today for that. We know that we can stand boldly in victory, knowing that Jesus Christ lives today. As the hymnal goes, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. That right there deserves a hallelujah. Praise right where you are. Put your hands together and just shout hallelujah. If you're in a place where you can't open your mouth, just raise your hands up. And just thank God right now just for giving him the gift to us. The gift of life on this side and the other side of heaven. We thank him today. Praise God. Praise God. Although our church doors may not be open to the masses right now, we thank God for this technology, which allows us to stay connected, to reach masses, so that they too can hear and receive a word from God virtually. This morning, we will hear from our very own pastor and shepherd of this house, Pastor Willie Jacobs Jr. I am not sure what God has given him this morning, but I trust and believe that he has a mighty word for the people of God. I am always excited to receive a fresh word from God, and I pray that you are too. If you don't have your Bibles, your smart devices, or something to take down notes with, Go grab them quickly because it's time to pray, praise, listen, and receive what the Lord has to say through the preached word of our very own Pastor Jacobs. And don't forget to stay tuned 
after Pastor Jacob Jr., after Willie Pastor Jacobs Jr. gives his word, because one of our ministers will be back to share ministry updates with you. We will move forward in our service this morning with our scripture and our prayer that will be read by our Deacon Grant. I mean, Reverend, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Reverend Grant. For those of you who are tuning in this morning on this Resurrection Sunday, our scripture reading will be coming from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. And the word of God reads, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake and for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angels answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye. For I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing, most of all to his doing and his, his divine word. Let us get into our prayer this morning. Our Father and our God, we come stop by this morning just to say thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, we thank you for you laid us down last night and you watches over us while we slumber and sleep. And early this morning, you woke us up once again, breathing the breath of life with the activities of our limbs. We just want to say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you because you didn't have to do it, but thank you that you did. And oh Lord, we thank you for the tuning in this morning over on the YouTube and everywhere else. All the people in the whole wide world, we thank you this morning knowing with all the virus and all the stuff that is going on, we can and will weather the storm. We thank you this morning for all the pastors and ministers and everyone that is associated in your daughter and son, Jesus Christ. We ask this morning that you tune in everywhere and listen to the preached word. And let us all pray that someone may come in and say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Let us not forget our first responders. We ask that you continue to bless them and heal their bodies, O Heavenly Father, knowing that you can and you will. We realize that you made us and you know all about us. And we want to thank you this morning for your divine healing power. We thank you for the things that you have done in our lives. We thank you for the things that you haven't done as yet. And we ask that you continue to bless us and keep us and guide us in the way that you see fit. We want to thank you this morning for our pastor, Dr. Willie Jacobs Jr. We ask that you give him a word this morning. Give him a word this morning as he come to proclaim your word that someone may come running and say, Oh Lord, what must I do to be saved? 
We thank you for every ministerial staff worldwide this morning. We ask that you continue to bless them, bless their families, and keep them and guide them in the way that you see fit. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Grant, for that prayer and that scripture. Um, we're going to move into our ministry of giving, but I want to be very clear that I know some of you may be logging in today as a part of your Easter Sunday tradition to attend church, but we as a body of believers, we call this Resurrection Sunday. It is the Sunday that our Savior rose. It is a Sunday, it is a Sunday that we praise a God who is alive. We don't serve a dead God. Our God is alive and he rose with all power. So we thank you for those who are joining today, maybe for the first time as a part of your tradition. But we want to bless you, bless you today and we hope that there is something that rests in your spirit to let you know how much God loves you, that he died for you, he died for me, and the grave couldn't keep him, the stone couldn't hold him, the guards couldn't contain him. But he got up with all power today. Yes, he did. Um, as we move forward, our ministry and giving, um, we have multiple ways in which you can give today. One is by Givelify. If you have not yet downloaded the Givelify app, you can do so. You should see the directions scrolling through to download the Givelify app. And it will also guide you through how you can look for True Love Missionary Baptist Church in Las Vegas, Nevada to provide your gift of giving. And if that is not convenient for you, you can also mail in your gift of giving to the True Love Missionary Baptist Church at 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. You can mail it, you can drop it by. So things that they made very convenient for you um, to allow you to continue to do what God has commanded us to do. And that's to also not only spiritually support our church, but to support our church financially. Um, now we will have Reverend Grant back to introduce our speaker, um, after which we will have our music ministry, and then you will hear your word from our pastor. Once again, if you're just tuning in this morning, we want you to get ready to listen to our pastor, the Reverend Willie Jacobs Jr., when he come to preach the undoctorated word of God. So stay tuned, put your hands together, stay focused, and get ready for a word from our own pastor, Dr. Willie Jacobs, Jr. Come on, let's bless the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. We just declare that we lift the Lord's name on high today. Because he's worthy of a prayer. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, help me sing it. Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love singing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save me. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. 
Let us pray, our God, our Father, we thank you for Resurrected Sunday. We thank you for a God who's gotten up and he's alive. And he's in heaven making intercession for us. God, we thank you that he's pleading our case because we have many issues, situations, and circumstances and problems in our life. And we need his help. God, we just thank you today. God, we thank you for his spirit that he sent down, that dwells within us as believers, that we can live a life that is holy and righteous. Oh, we celebrate today because we celebrate a living Savior. We celebrate life. We celebrate joy, peace, happiness, and contentment because Jesus got up early and we thank you that he's alive and well. Oh, we serve a living Savior. And we thank you today. We celebrate Resurrection Sunday. And we love you. We praise your name. We ask, oh God, you'd open up the hearts and the mind of all those who are out there listening and those who are watching. That you'll open up their hearts and their minds and real lives that we have a good God, a wonderful God, a great God that has blessed us in so many ways and continue to sustain us even at this hour and what we are going through in our nation right now. Oh, we thank you today. We praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. What a wonderful day. Resurrected Sunday. The church as an assembly, it may not be full, but we ought to be full of Jesus. We ought to be full of his goodness and, and be thankful for his blessing. And thank God for who he is and what he has done in our lives. We ought to be the most happy, the most joyous, the most contented people out of all people. It doesn't matter what's happening in our lives. We ought to have some peace because we know Jesus is Lord and Savior. Oh, we thank God this day. We're here to celebrate Resurrected Sunday. The first day of the week, we as Christians, we celebrate because of, what, of who and who he is and what he's done in our lives. We thank you today. Amen. I want to give you a scripture. We want to deal with some words. I want to help somebody. Why I help myself. Amen. And Matthew, we've been preaching on it for the last three days. Uh, Reverend uh, Wilson preached on it Wednesday night. Reverend Gray preached on it 
Thursday night, and Dr. Henfields uh, preached on it on Friday night. I'm going to preach on it on Resurrected Sunday. Amen. In the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. You know, we can look at it on the screen and, and, and uh, let's read. And after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other men came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel, but the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, have, have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran uh, to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Thank you for his word. Amen. I want you for a second. Coming up empty. Coming up empty. If you look if you read chapter 26 of Matthew and 27, you see the plans, and you see the schemes, and you see how uh, the high priests and the Pharisees all, uh, their plans were to get rid of Jesus. Their plans, and they had to have somebody to help them. And they got one of Jesus' own, Judas Iscariot. But let's look, let's move forward as we uh, look at the scripture. I want to kind of look on the backside as if though we know nothing about what happened. We read the scripture so we know the whole story. But let's look at the backside of it on how these sinners, these religious folks, we got them in the church right now. Uh, they suppose the victory on the cross. The priests finally get rid of the one who spoke power and authority. And the Pharisees finally, they're going to get rid of Jesus out of sight and out of mind. And the politicians can lie and deceive the people because they've gotten rid of Jesus who challenged them in their behavior. Now it seems and it was the people who walked a crooked road and traveled down a path of deception. They are the one that wanted to get rid of Jesus. Do you know anybody want to get rid of Jesus? Jesus was bad for business for those who walked in darkness. Jesus is good for business and Jesus is just good to be around. We don't know the time nor the hour the angels showed up and rolled the stone away, but we do know it happened. Listen, 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 listen. He rolled the stone away. Are you with me? And let me tell you something. In those days, in that time, in that system, for the stone to be rolled away were a death sentence. Are you listening to me? The guards were stationed there. There are those who will do anything to keep Jesus away from them. Some 
will go through obstacles and go through anything to get to Jesus. Are you listening to me? In verse 1, Mary Magdalene uh, and Mary, the mother of Zebedee's uh, sons. Uh, that's in Matthew 27, verse 56. Uh, maybe she were uh, Jesus' aunt, but we do know it was not the mother, but it was the other Mary. I am so impressed with the women's, how they approach and their reasoning and their thought and how they received Jesus and their behavior and their life were changed because of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, are you with me? Are you with me? See? In their march to the grave, their reasoning and thinking is we are going to see Jesus. It seems as though his death had inspired them more than anything. Jesus, listen, I want you to listen. Jesus who had one pair of sandals and one coat hanger had a life that would change many and would change the world. Jesus says foxes had holes and birds had neck, but the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. And he had no earthly, listen, inheritance to give a lead to anybody. But Jesus, listen, Jesus' life uh, of a humility and miracles express his being and purpose in an excellent style and way. And those women had a love for Jesus like nothing else. Yeah. Listen, Jesus put their soul on a path and a journey of no return. And their hearts rest and burn with his divine truth, love, and humility. And these women found a pure way of Jesus that expressed hope and gave assurance that was nobody like him and nobody really who is real could deny him. These women discovered in Jesus a truth that was nowhere else. Are you listening to me? Uh, they, they didn't want, they didn't have to pretend or uh, 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 come up with some excuse for they knew that Jesus was real and honest and sincere. They experienced in life what life had taught them and led them to trust Jesus for all things. They put it all to the test. And the greatest and the most important thing about a test is not the question. But do you know the answer? And our problems and situations and issues and the things we face in life, Jesus is the answer. Do you know? Jesus had captured their, their past and their souls had found a new life and a new way of life. Life and going to the tomb of knowing a dead Jesus was there was better than having no Jesus at all. Jesus showed them the love and the love of affection they could never find or never could experience on their own. For Jesus' life infected and it affected their total beings and his death brought on a greater love and affection. This transformed life consumed their thoughts and reasoning and won their hearts and Jesus' will served out in their life. They got all wrapped up, listen to me, in the joy and in the present and in the life of Jesus. Anybody wrapped up in Jesus? They lack their chances with Jesus. Uh, even at the grave, Jesus, listen, his will and way made more sense and caught their heart like nothing else. There were a part of Jesus that saturated the heart and mind and the truth rang out in life and through life and they were a people and they were women who had a love for Jesus. They were a sense that they discovered and with Jesus of hope and a purpose they could never have known nor found anywhere else. Jesus who gave them hope and a way of life on earth and a mansion they could not buy and a promise they didn't refuse and himself who was the only hope of glory. Anybody know what I'm talking about? These women came to do the work of an undertaker but it was not needed. 
The women were sincere, but they doubted Christ's promise that he'd rise. They expected he would be in the tomb. Watch this. Heaven put on a welcome for these women who showed up at a tomb. There was a great earthquake, and the angels of the Lord descended. God showed up. Listen, God showed up, and the earthquake greeted his son in the grave. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The angel rolled back the stones. Amen. Not for Jesus to come out, but for us to go in. The angel sat on the stone. The angel sitting on the stone shows Christ had conquered death. Verses 4 and 5, the anxiety of the empty tomb. The Roman soldiers God in the tomb. It was their assigned duty in Matthew 27, verse 62 through 66. Jesus is dead. And the chief priests and the Pharisees still remember Jesus' word. After three days, I will rise again. It reminisced in their thought and their mind. They could never get it out of it. Because Jesus was the, was the truth. Jesus' words penetrated their thinking, their reason, even though they did not believe in Jesus. Uh, listen, 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 listen. In Matthew uh, uh, 27, verse 63, they, 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 they the deceivers, the, the sinners, the, the chief priests and the Pharisees, they go to Pilate to look and ask for help and assurance to keep Jesus in the grave. Uh, they went to Pilate and they asked Pilate, we want you to put soldiers in. We want you to seal the tomb. And the priests and the Pharisees and the priests, they still had a fear for Jesus, even Jesus being dead. Even the doubt of who he was played on their heart and on their mind. But they still remembered the words in three days, I will rise. Are you with me? Are you with me? The Pharisees and, 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 the, and, and, and the chief priests, uh, they couldn't get it out of their mind. Their mind was cuddled and their mind was clouded because Jesus had said those words. In three days, I will rise. Mama said, can't no grave hold my body down. Pilate gave the chief priests and the, and the Pharisees rest at heart. He put, he had the stone and he sealed it and he put gods on the tomb for three days. The gods to give these religious folks peace of mind. But in verse 4, when the angels appeared, the God went in shock. Amen. They began to be terrified and trembled when they saw the angels. They fainted and became, as the scripture said, like dead men. Alive, but they was dead in their tribe. The soldiers had good reason to be all shook up because they had an assignment to God the tomb and they had to report to their superiors. Imagine Jesus being missing. What are they going to tell their superiors? Uh, were you asleep? Uh, were you present or did you sell out to somebody else? That they had to explain to their superiors what happened to Jesus. Well, this experience of working their hearts, the earth kick and the angels got their personal attention. And now the soldiers knew, now they knew that he truly was the son of God. They were on God watching and waiting to keep the religious folks calm and happy. But the soldiers, they had it wrong in their understanding and, and, and knowing who Jesus was. They rejected him. Have you know, do you know, or have you ever rejected Jesus? It's a costly and it costs you a lot to reject Jesus. As Judith, he'll tell you, it costs you when you reject Jesus. So one day and someday, we all will be face to face with the reality. Who is Jesus in your life? Are you with me? In verse 
six. He is not here. They said he done got up. Jesus. He said he'd get up. He got up. And they said, come see the place. The angel said, where he lay. And at the tomb is our hope and assurance of we have a risen Savior. Uh, it is our birthright that we belong to him. But we ought to know that he is the truth and the light. Yeah. No man no can show up or come to the Father. But they got to come through Jesus. The assurance are given as an empty tomb. We have the assurance now we can live with a great hope and a lively spirit. We can say, free at last. Free at last. Jesus has risen. And we are free at last. Thank you, Jesus. We surrendered our all to him. The threat of sickness or even this virus. We trust him to take care of us. Our heads on the pillar, but our soul and hearts with him. The resurrection is the basic for the church to witness to the world. We ought to be able to tell the world that he's real. They ought to see him in our lives. They ought to see he is alive in us by the way we live. But in verse 7, they said, go tell. Go quickly and tell his disciples. The angel is talking to the women. The, the, the God squad, uh, these men of, of, of the Lord, uh, his, his disciples, they have left him. They went in hiding. And Jesus, and, and, and the angels going to send the angels looking for the God squad. The fear of man is a snare. They were afraid of the religious folks. They were afraid of what they would do, what they would say, so they went hiding. Uh, Jesus says, promise all of us. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. The disciples was heartbroken and, and pushed to the limit and they simply went to pieces and they couldn't handle it because their Savior, their Lord, the one they had been following and the one that they believed in, the one they had trusted in, now were dead. And guess what? Uh, things can happen to us. We can come to a point in our life where we fall down, but we ought to get up. Jesus had in mind a comeback and making his disciples even a greater people. So he tells, tell his disciples he is risen from the dead. The angels is telling them and, and tell him that Jesus wants to hook up with them in Galilee. In verse 8, woman get in a hurry. They leave the tomb and they go looking even though they are afraid they turns in to uh, begin to be filled with joy. Good news of the risen Lord brought high joy and their, their fear seemed to have vanished. They were moved in a fulfillment of a, of a loving and a living and overcoming the expectation because Jesus had risen. Uh, that they, they, the women shared the good news with, with, with Jesus' disciples. But in verse 9, look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, suddenly Jesus met the woman. He greeted them and they expressed heart, soul, and mind and they worshiped him. This is why we come to church to pray and worship him. Today ought to be a time of high worship, of high praise, of thanking that he got up. He got up for us. He rolled with all power in his hand. The women fell at his feet. The place where you surrender with humility that express love and, and reverence to the one of excellence and greatness. And Jesus is great. He's great and know the place of those who claim him as Lord and Savior rest their hope, their life, their being at his feet. Jesus said in verse 10 to the women, do not be afraid. Tell the brothers. And Jesus said, brothers, now it had a different meaning and a different effect. There's no more ill feelings, no more hate, no blame, no harm, no worry, no hard feelings. All have passed. Now we are brothers. The P-A-S-T have P-A-S-S. Now he calls them brothers. 
which means love and, and affection with a warm heart of forgiving brothers. No more disciples, disciples, but yet he called them brothers. We ought to be calling each other brothers and sisters. Except to mean that we have a greater love for each other. We have a greater understanding for each other. That we have feeling and we share it with one another's burden. We have the assurance and if the tomb is our hope and our divine assurance. Because he had risen. Risen, he tells them, fear not. What God's word is in trembling time. He said, For I know God knows all about us. He is not here. That ought to be good news. That ought to be shout news for those that know Jesus. He has risen. It ought to be a hallelujah in the church. As he said he was. God keep his word. He said, they said, go quiet and tell them. That means missionaries. We ought to be telling about the good news of Jesus. What he done for us. What does the empty tomb mean to us? Coming up empty. A tomb. It ought to mean something for us. An empty tomb should, should move us to a spiritual reality. To a greater understanding. To a greater love. To a greater affection for others. The empty tomb should assure us that Christ is alive today. And he's well, and the very power of his spirit lives within us. We are, we, we, he's risen. He's not here. Go. Tell my boys. Go tell my brothers. Go tell them. Tell them I want to meet them in Galilee. The empty tomb should move us to be more kind and more loving, more honest, faithful, committed, more happy, joyous, forgiving, sincere, and it ought to move us to be holy. Amen. Go tell my brothers. Go tell them. And if the tomb casts out the darkness and the hopelessness of doubt in our life, then if the tomb has given us a life of radiant life in Christ, and if the tomb is the only hope of eternal life, then that is with Jesus. Our lives are to be empty of hate. Of hate. Somebody said hate, hate, double crossing, backstabbing, hurt, pain, wounds of others. If you're complaining and battling for power, titles, and position, empty of self, but filled with the joy and the love of Christ. Empty of self. Then let the tomb give us the assurance that God has overcome the grave and death and we are in him are made more than a conqueror. We rest our hope and being on an empty tomb. I'm closing. His blood has signed off our sins. The grave had put our past to rest. His resurrection has assured us that life that wakes us are the assurance and Jesus are the principle and the foundation of all. We ought to be glad he got up with all power in his hand. So the death, the burial, and the resurrection are our passport through faith and grace to be with Jesus. And I'm glad about it. The thief on the cross got a hook up on the cross. Because he met Jesus. And Jesus did not check, did not want a resume, did not check his background. But Jesus hooked up with him. Just like he hooked up with us one day. He's risen. He's not here. He's gone. On up to heaven. And I'm glad about it. Because he sent the power of the Spirit for us to live holy and righteous. To live a life that is complete. A life. That is fulfilled with him. We ought to exhibit him. When we come to church. We ought to be filled with the power. Of the spirit. That we can celebrate. A living hope. Celebrate a living God. Celebrate. One who will never leave us. Not willing to forsake. Lord I'm with you. Always. I like. I like. What Job said. Yeah though he's slated. Yet I'm going to hang out with him. I'm glad about it. 
You can't beat that. You can't do better than Jesus. Mama said, he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. It's good to hang out with Jesus. It's good to know the day we're celebrating resurrection. He got up. He's not in the grave. He got up with all power. And I'm glad about it. It ain't black power. It ain't white power. It ain't green power. But it's Holy Ghost power. Let the power that we can overcome. Let the power that we can be new. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. We need that power to live a life that is joy, full of hope, full of strength, full of courage, a life, an overcoming life. Jesus got up. I'm glad he got up. Yeah, I'm glad he got up. He got up because he had to get up for me. Father's in darkness. On my way to hell. Celebrating me. Enjoying the ride. But Jesus moved into our lives and changed our direction. Change our destiny. We ought to be glad about it. We ought to be happy because there ain't nobody like Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for you never stop loving us. Thank you for your very present God. Thank you for you've given us the power to live holy, live righteous, to celebrate you in our life. I'm going to extend an invitation to your discipleship. There may be one. There may be many. Who is dealing with with the pain of a life of suffering, dealing with hopelessness, dealing with emptiness, dealing with a life that is tearing you apart, I can tell you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You can take your cares to him. He cares for you. There's nobody like Jesus. He understands you better than you understand yourself. He is a very present God. He's here in Vegas and he's here wherever you are. He's a right now God. And he knows and he understands. And he's asking you to take your burdens, take your cares. He will take care of your crisis, but you have to come to him. Give it all to him. Acknowledge who he is, that he is the Savior and the Lord who can deliver you out of darkness into his glorious and into his marvelous light. He's waiting on you. You have to make a confession. You have to accept him. You have to walk in him. You have to walk to him, and he will walk with you. But you have to come just as you are. Some may say, well, you don't know how bad I am. You don't know what I've done. No, I don't, but he do. And he's a forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's an understanding God. He will take you right where you are. Just as you sit, just as you stand, just as you kneel, just maybe on the floor, but he will take you up because he cares. So he came to seek the lost, the least, and the left out. So just come. Make it. Make it on your own by coming and accepting him. Mother can't help you, dad can't help you, grannies can't help you, even the preacher can't help you. You have to do it by faith. You have to do it with heart of love. You have to confess him, but he's the only way. No other system, no other plan, no other door, no other way, no other person, but Jesus. You have to acknowledge him. Doesn't matter what systems say, doesn't matter what they say, it's what he says. He said, I am the door. Just come to him. Just come. You can give yourself to him. He's willing and he's able right now. Amen. Thank you.
we're going to do Holy Communion. Amen. And those of you who are out there who want to take part, you're welcome. We invite you to come and take communion. This is a great time. He's risen. Amen. And he's alive. Now, communion is for those who have accepted and received Christ as Lord and Savior. Those who accept the finished work on the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, we accept that as the truth, as a fact. And we live and we acknowledge it. And as often as we do this, is in remembrance of him. And remembers what he did. He paid it all. Nobody else, the sinless one, paid it all for us. Let me say it again. His death, his burial, and resurrection of a passport through faith in accepting him as Lord and Savior. Amen. May I pray with you. Oh God, our Father, we thank you. Is there anything in our hearts and our minds that is not pleasing in your sight? We ask, oh God, that you forgive us. Take it away. We need to be right with you. And God, we ask right now to make us clean, holy, and right in your sight. Oh, and we love you today. We acknowledge you today on this resurrected Sunday. That you have risen and that your spirit lives in us and we rejoice right now in your presence and we love you and we thank you. Hallelujah. Bless your name. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. say you said the bread for us, but it doesn't matter. You could say either or. We always, most of the time, and every time we say uh, the bread, but it doesn't matter. He blessed the cup. He blessed the bread. He blessed the cup, and he blessed the bread. And he blessed the bread, and he blessed the cup. And he blessed the bread, and he said, eat, this is my body, let us eat. And he blessed the cup, likewise. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant for you. As often as you drink of this cup, is in remembrance of me. And this is for the remission of sin. This is why we eat the bread, and we drink the cup because we have a relationship with the Lord. We, have, we know he's coming back. We don't know when, but we are ready to receive him when he's come. 
because we have a genuine relationship with the Lord. Let us pray. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day day to day. It will never, never be Thank you. We have one other thing to do here. Amen. Let me say that. We celebrate with our friends and our family. When they excel and they do great things. And today uh, uh, we celebrate and congratulate our sister Angela D. Riley, the, huh? P. The P doesn't stand for prophet, but it stands for it's her initial. Angela graduated from Grand Canyon University with a Master of Art in Christian Ministry. What a great achievement. What a great accomplice, accomplishment. And we applaud her and we say to those who are out there in our church that she qualified to proclaim the truth of God's word. Now Angela, I, I've watched her, I've observed her, and many times people are observing you and watching you uh, when you think they're not. And I see her as a person of greatness, of doing wonderful things in the ministry. And we applaud her and we love her and we're thankful that she's here where the love is true and true love. And she will do great and wonderful things here. She will also be going to other places proclaiming God's word. And we congratulate her. We uh, honor her today, this resurrected Sunday. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, we thank her. You know, she had a great work to do, an even greater work God will call her. And we thank you, Angie, uh, for graduating with a Master of Arts from Christian Ministry. Amen. We love you, we applaud you, we thank you, we love you again. Come on, Angie. Amen. Amen. So those of you who are out there, her friends, amen, bless her with something wonderful. Amen. For her great achievement. That's what we're called to, uh, to applaud, to congratulate. And one thing I have learned as a person, never be envy of a person that can do things greater than you. Learn how to applaud them and be grateful that you can learn something from them. Amen. So Sister Angie, here, and at True Love, you have, I'm giving you your license that you can proclaim God's word with power. Amen. 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 We will be closing and we'll give you the blessing. Amen. On this resurrected Sunday. And we thank all who are listening and watching, celebrate Christ in your life. Not just this 
let's write this Sunday, but every day. The Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And it says that we should always give him the glory, the honor, give him the respect, and magnify his glorious name. We thank you for those who who listening. We thank you for being with us on this resurrected Sunday. We love you. We pray for you. We pray for you. We, can, we can't pray through you. That's for you to do. But we're here for you because we love you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Happy Resurrection Sunday to each and every one of you, my family and friends. Amen. And family and friends of True Love Missionary Baptist Church. I hope that you were blessed by the Resurrection Sunday morning message that Dr. Jacobs just ministered, coming up empty from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Some of the highlights of the message. Amen. Going to the tomb and finding a dead Jesus is better than no Jesus at all. Amen. They came to anoint him. They came as undertakers, but their services were not needed. The guard, they were witnesses to the resurrection as well, but also had to explain what happened. The guard was on assignment, but they came up empty as well. That that empty tomb should remind us that Christ is risen and it should move us to be loving and kind and forgiving and holy. The empty tomb should also empty us of hate and selfishness, malice and like behaviors. Beloved, I hope that your life has been enriched by this virtual worship experience. This pandemic and quarantine has been challenging for us all. It is our intention through each of our virtual ministries to let you know that you are not alone and that we're in this thing together. For those of you who don't have a pastor or a church home, we extend to you a virtual hug and handshake today. We want you to know that Dr. Jacobs wants to be your pastor and we want to be your church family. And once the stay at home for Nevada quarantine has ended, we want you to come and join us for worship so that we can welcome you home to true love. Pastor Jacobs has already extended the invitation to you to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord and or to join True Love Missionary Baptist Church. Now let us hear from you. Text I believe to 55469 or call us at 702-648-3603 so that one of our ministry leaders can contact you regarding your decision today. My sisters and brothers, to do ministry like this, it takes a dedicated team of individuals to coordinate and execute such a venture. Right where you are, I will verbally call the roll and roll the credits for our team of 10. Help me praise God today for Pastor Willie Jacobs Jr. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me thank God for my tag team worship leader, partner, Sister Angela Riley, for our music ministry team under the capable leadership of Brother Matthew Banks, for our liturgist this morning, Reverend, Do uh, Reverend Dwight Grant Sr., for our media ministry team, Deacon Orlando Riley and Deacon Don Shoemate, and Brother Deshaun Wilson. Worshiping and connecting like this, sisters and brothers, is new and different for us all. These virtues virtual worship services, meetings, prayer lines, and Bible studies have literally pushed us in some way beyond our comfort zones. But isn't it good to know that even though we are shut in, God is not letting his people be boxed in. Even the way that we give to mission and ministry today is in a new and different way for some of us. Please know, my friends, that we greatly appreciate your faithful giving during these trying times. Your ongoing financial support helps True Love Missionary Baptist Church meet the needs of our church members and community 
as well as to further our efforts to share and spread the word of God. Members, friends, and partners, please make your donation to True Love Missionary Baptist Church now or at any time during the week. You can give electronically on Givelify, or you can send your check or money order to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. These are your announcements. If you need prayer, our prayer calls are on Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. The call-in number is 347-817-2170. The access code is 1144034. If you want to stay abreast of True Love Missionary Baptist Church's ministry updates, and announcements. Text TLMBC to 55469 or visit True Love's Facebook page regularly. Finally, if you missed any part of today's live service, you can catch the rewind on Facebook Live on our Facebook page, rather, or on our YouTube channel. Thank you again, sisters and brothers, for tuning in and sharing in our Resurrection Sunday virtual worship experience. We look forward to sharing with you again, same time, same page, and conference line. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Willie Jacobs, Jr., and the entire True Love Missionary Baptist Church family, we love you, we're praying for you. We encourage you to hang all of your hope on Jesus Christ and never forget we're in this thing together. Until next time, may the Lord our God bless you real good.